Hey everyone, thanks for joining us uh, on a primer on Gateway API extensions. My name is Damian Hansen. I'm a software engineer with Solo.io. Uh, I've been involved with Gateway API uh, either as a maintainer, a contributor, or an implementer since the project's inception. Hey everyone, my name is Sanjay Bhatia. I'm a software engineer at VMware, and uh, I'm a maintainer of the Contour Ingress controller and a contributor to Gateway API. So what is Gateway API? Uh, Gateway API is a project uh, that's managed by the SIG network uh, community within Kubernetes. And it is a collection of resources uh, used to describe service routing uh, within Kubernetes. And it is the next generation of, of uh, Kubernetes routing and load balancing APIs. You may ask yourself, well, uh, what's so next generation uh, about Gateway API? Uh, Gateway API supports a, a ton of different protocols from gRPC, TLS, of course, HTTP, uh, layer four protocols. Uh, the, the protocol support uh, continues to uh, evolve within the project. It can uh, perform advanced uh, traffic routing. This could be routing uh, across different namespaces or based on information within the request, if it's a header, uh, and not only the request, but also the response as well. So uh, Gateway API uh, allows us to do uh, a lot of really cool, fun things uh, for, uh, for routing traffic uh, within a Kubernetes cluster or into or outside of our Kubernetes cluster. And I, I mentioned that Gateway API is a collection of resources. Uh, there are some core resources that we want to talk about uh, in more uh, detail here. Uh, there is the Gateway class resource. Uh, the Gateway class resource represents a, a, a set or a collection uh, of gateways that have a common configuration and behavior um, you could think of a gateway class uh, that's called internet facing. That would include all gateways that are exposed outside uh, to the public internet, uh, while another gateway class called internal would only be for, um, you know, for internal communication and not exposed uh, outside of your trust domain, for example. Um, and so beyond the gateway class, we have a gateway. Uh, this is a resource that actually is a core of Gateway API. So the Gateway resources is what uh, actually instantiates the infrastructure used um, to perform these operations. So typical implementations of a Gateway would be a load balancer or a proxy. Um, and when you create a Gateway behind the scenes, uh, there is a controller that's responsible for uh, watching and reconciling a gateway that then goes ahead and um, instantiates that infrastructure, creates a, a, the, the proxy or the load balancer. Maybe it creates a Kubernetes service that, that allows requests to the gateway to be load balanced across a series uh, of gateways. Uh, and then we have routes. In this example, we see the HTTP route um, that's used to, uh, to route requests that match traffic for a particular gateway. And you see the lines that go in between all these, that, that represents how these different resources are interrelated. So when you create a route, you attach a route to a gateway. When you create a gateway, you tell the gateway that it's part of a particular gateway class, and that becomes a relationship between these, uh, uh, between these uh, resources. Um, and then last but not least, right, we, we, we talk about the gateway being a piece of infrastructure, uh, within a gateway class and, and HT, an HTTP route being configuration to tell the gateway where to go ahead and send that request. But ultimately that request needs to go to something. Uh, typically um, it's a, a, a service that's uh, within the route, it's represented as a backend, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a service. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk through some examples here as we move forward through some of these slides. So we talked uh, briefly about the different core resources and what Gateway API is at a high level. Um, but let's dive into a little bit more about the extensibility and really to talk about 
extensibility for gateway API, we need to understand a concept of feature support levels, right? So features um, are expressed through maybe fields of a resource or a particular resource. And the different resources and fields uh, actually have different support levels, right? And so um, if, it, if a field or a resource is considered core support, that means that all implementations that are con uh, conformant to Gateway API uh, must support the resource, the fields within the resource if it's considered, um, if it's considered core as well. And here's an example of a core resource, right? Gateway is, is a core resource, and this gateway defines core fields. A gateway class name, right? Uh, what uh, gateway class is this gateway uh, a member of? And then uh, a listener. Uh, this is an HTTP listener that specifies the name, a protocol, and a, a TCP port to expose on the gateway. Um, and these are all core fields. So no matter what the implementation is uh, for Gateway API, it must support these fields. And, the, and um, that ensures that users of these APIs that allows you to, uh, that portability, right? To be able to go between implementations um, and know that you're gonna get the expected behavior. So now the next support level is extended. And what this means is an implementation doesn't necessarily have to support an extended feature, but if it does, uh, that it must support the feature per uh, the specification. And here's a few examples of extended features, right? So you can go ahead and use the address field to specify a type and, uh, of address and the value for that address type. Um, or more likely, you, you would go ahead and you'd create uh, a filter within your HTTP route um, or your route resource uh, that performs some kind of operation on that request. And in this example, the URL rewrite filter is an extended filter, although Gateway API has, uh, has route filters that are core. Uh, and leading into extensions, implementation specific features, uh, they are not portable. They are not part of the gateway API release. So uh, the, 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 the types uh, for these um, implement, implementation specific features, those types are not part of the Go types that are specified within the project. What the project does instead is it has these extension points uh, that reference an object. Right. In this example, we see that it's the gateway class parameters ref that's referencing uh, an object. Uh, and when we reference an object, it's by group, kind, and name. It can also include a namespace. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, referencing uh, uh, resources across namespaces. Um, and in this example, we use that parameters ref extension point to expose uh, configuration. Uh, through a custom resource that uh, we as an implementer would be responsible for supporting. Um, and, and again, uh, th this, since it is implementation specific, it's not portable across uh, implementations, uh, hence the name implementation specific. Uh, but in this example, we see that the my config resource is used to, uh, to create an address pool. And um, I, I would expect that this implementation uses this address pool that when gateways are instantiated from this gateway class, that uh, there's uh, the, the implementation has a controller that uh, assigns addresses from this pool to those gateways. So you, you see in the examples that I provided uh, for these extension points, uh, typically it's a reference to a uh, a, a group and a kind and a name, right? And so that's a local object reference expecting that that uh, resource that is being referred to is within the same uh, namespace um, as a reference. But Gateway API also provides that flexibility, right? Being able to balance both being secure by default, saying that the reference has to be in the same um, namespace as the referring resource, 
but also providing the flexibility to say, you know what, I may need to reference uh, a, a object that exists in a different namespace. And here's a perfect example, right? Uh, having an HTTP route in one namespace that needs to refer to uh, a service in a different namespace. And that's where the reference grant resource comes in. And the reference grant resource is this flexible resource um, that allows you to specify the to and from, right? So uh, from what resource do you want to uh, um, give a grant to reference for another resource? And of note, as you can see in this diagram, uh, when you create a reference grant, you always wanna put that reference grant in the namespace of the resource that's being referred to, right? And, and what that does is in the background, there's a controller that'd be watching uh, the, uh, the reference from the HTTP route to the service. And um, without the reference grant, the controller would say, no, sorry, would surface some kind of status condition in the HTTP, HTTP route saying, yeah, you're, you're, you know, invalid reference. Um, but with the reference grant, the, the implementations controller would, would look and say, okay, HTTP route, you're trying to reference service and backend namespace. Um, this is a different namespace, but I see that there's a reference grant there that allows this. So I'm now gonna allow that configuration to exist. And then of course, uh, requests that come through the, the gateway and, and will eventually go to the service and, and the backend namespace. And again, uh, this reference grant um, resource provides that flexibility for gateway A API to allow that cross namespace reference. So hopefully this is starting to make a little sense to you. Um, and and uh, this, will allow us to dive a little bit deeper into the different extension points provided by Gateway API. Uh, the first that we'll talk about is the parameters ref within a Gateway class. I've already touched on it a few times, uh, so we won't dive too deeply into it, but um, the parameters ref is used for exposing custom configuration. It's optional if you wanna create gateways of a particular Gateway class, and that Gateway class just has a controller name, no parameters ref then what's expected is those gateways would be uh, um, instantiated with default configuration. But um, in, in uh, typical environments, you're gonna want to be able to have uh, custom configuration if it's at, uh, maybe some type of network publishing strategies to be able to say, I wanna use a node ports or external load balancers for my gateways, all these kinds of things. That's just, you know, just kind of scratching the surface of the custom configuration that you could provide uh, to your gateways, this is the extension point that you want to do, or, or the extension point you want to use. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a custom resource, right? This could be a config map that's supported as a um, as a core uh, support level. Um, but in um, what I've seen quite a bit in projects that I've been involved in is the desire to have typed configuration and not just a, a data blob within a, a config map. And that's typically where you see this parameters ref used. Gateway certificates provides another extension point uh, for, uh, for us to use. So well, we've already talked about what a gateway is, right? And so for gateways, they could terminate uh, uh, HTTPS TLS traffic. And to do that, um, it needs to know about the TLS certificates and keys to do so, right? And uh, by default, you can store these TLS certs and keys in a secret, and that's supported as a core in the core support level for that feature. But if for some reason you have a, um, a use case that says, hey, I can't store these uh, certs or keys in a Kubernetes secret, I need some other kind of resource, um, uh, Gateway API provides that mechanism uh, within cert, uh, the cert refs uh, field. Uh, again, local object reference, if you need to refer to this resource um, in an, uh, another namespace, we need a reference grant and we specify namespace within certificate refs. Um, and, and one point about that certificates ref is it doesn't, or, or the reference grant is, it don't, doesn't necessarily need to be used with a custom resource, right? So if you have a secret in a different namespace, um, you could still use the reference grant and you don't uh, have to specify the group and kind because it's inferred that it'd be a secret and it'd just be the name and namespace. Route backends. So uh, as part of a route, well, for example, HTTP route, 
Um, that route is configuration uh, to match traffic uh, for a gateway, to optionally do something with that traffic, modify it, transform it and such, and then eventually route that traffic to a backend such as a service, right? Uh, well, we, uh, we can do matching requests, um, or I'm sorry here, we can go ahead and have a backend that's potentially you know, not a service, right? Um, and here we have an HTTP route backend named MyCubeService that refers to a service. This slide's actually incorrect, I apologize for that. This should say service and not secret. We'll, we'll fix that uh, after the recording. Uh, but we can also specify some type of Im implementation specific resource. Um, in this example, my custom backend. You know, this could be uh, a, a, an AWS storage bucket. This could even be a multi-cluster service, right? So if I don't want to route to um, to a service within my cluster, and I want to route it to a different cluster, I could use uh, the the Kubernetes multi-cluster services uh, as a backend as well. Um, and then optionally routes, as I mentioned. Uh, can modify the traffic using filters. Um, and this mechanism can be expressed at the rule level, or it can be expressed uh, per backend, right? So if I want to go ahead and um, have a filter for all matched traffic, do something to that traffic, let's say authenticate it first before sending it to the backend service, um, I would do it at the rule level, but if I say I just want to do it with for a particular backend, that's where we start. We can have filters as a field on a per backend basis. Now, an important uh, distinction here is there are uh, there are filters within Gateway API that are core or extended, or again, uh, even using the uh, the uh, resource reference uh, model for referring to uh, implementation specific. Uh, resources, but even if a core filter um, is expressed on a per backend basis, that filter is no longer considered core, it's considered extended. And then no matter where you uh, express your implementation specific filter, either at the rule level or the backend level, that's always going to be um, implementation specific from a support level standpoint. But I just uh, wanted to make sure you understand that distinction of, of using the core filters uh, either at the rule level or the backend level. And typically what I see is, is uh, filters being used at the rule level. Um, I've already touched on this, that, um, that there's filters that are part of Gateway API at the core or extended level. Um, here's an example of the request header modifier uh, filter. There, that is a, um, well, that's core. And then there's actually a response header modifier that's not core, that's extended. Uh, or in this example, I say, hey, I want to actually authenticate uh, those requests um, that are matched. And before forwarding the request to my backend service, I'm gonna go ahead and um, have this my auth filter to be able to express um, all sorts of authentication configuration um, that my, impl my implementation would utilize to authenticate those requests before forwarding the request onto the backend. So uh, that provides an, uh, an overview of some of the extension mechanisms for Gateway API. Um, hopefully that, that helps you. Um, kind of get that foundation set. And, and now I wanna go ahead and hand it over to Sanjay to talk more about the, di uh, the additional extension types. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Um, so Daniel's talked about a lot of the uh, extension mechanisms within Gateway API resources that allow uh, you to refer to a custom configuration uh, resource from within a, uh, one of the Gateway API core resources. Um, there's a few fields within these resources that also allow you to uh, provide some custom configuration, particularly in the form of uh, what you would call a domain prefixed string that you can use to uh, provide some custom types or custom uh, 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 
values. So for example, the gateway address type, uh, you can provide a custom uh, domain prefix string to um, provide a implementation specific interpretation of that type there. Um, in, in addition, the uh, gateway listener protocol you can have a domain prefixed uh, string to uh, supply a custom protocol that your implementation may support. Uh, and similarly, uh, passing TLS options for a gateway listener. Uh, you can um, specify some domain prefix strings for the keys for these options that you may provide. Um, in addition, uh, the regular expression match type on various routes uh, is implementation specific uh, support level um, because various implementations may use different regular expression engines uh, or what have you. So HTTP route path header or query parameter matching uh, when it's of type regular expression, that's implementation specific support. And similarly for gRPC route. Um, so now we'll move on to a pretty powerful uh, type of um, extension point that Gateway API is uh, um, enthusiastic about. And that has to do with, it's called policy attachment. And um, more generally, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about meta resources, which Dan's actually talked about a little bit with referenced grant. So uh, a meta resource is a Kubernetes object that aug augments the behavior of another one. So uh, in the case of reference grant, you are able to allow cross namespace references by uh, uh, with the configuration that you have in a reference grant. Uh, similarly, a policy is a meta resource that allows you to augment behavior of another object. Um, so for example, uh, you may want to uh, apply some configuration to an HTTP route or a gateway or a service that is implementation specific. Um, but, and this gives us a huge opportunity to uh, um, do implementation specific things without having to add these things to the gateway API or the core networking APIs in the case of uh, service. Um, this sort of standard method to plug features into the gateway API and possibly in the future, uh, more broadly in Kubernetes, um, it offers a, a, a great opportunity to augment the, the APIs in general and offer a uniform user experience. And we're hoping that this standard approach, standardized approach for uh, using these types of meta resources um, can be a, a nice way for implement implementations of the gateway API to extend the gateway API. Um, so the core of policy attachment is the, uh, the target ref. So every policy resource uh, should contain a target reference field that allows you to specify a similar to reference grant uh, and some of the other um, ex extension points that Daniel was talking about, a local object reference um, for the target of this policy. And along with that target reference, you'll have some configuration that you want to apply to this, uh, to the target of your policy. Um, there's two types of policy attachment, the first of which is direct policy attachment for when you want to um, augment a particular individual resource. So for in this example here, we have a TLS policy that is targeting a service. Um, and in this case, we may want to apply some configuration that uh, a proxy implementation of or an ingress uh, controller implementation of gateway API uses to um, apply uh, TLS con uh, connection details between the pro a proxy and the backend service. So this is a way to, instead of having to change the service resource itself, we can add a meta resource, a policy that targets a service and allows us to have some implementation specific configuration um, on top of the uh, what service gives us already. And another the next form of policy attachment we have is uh, inherited policy attachment, which is uh, useful for when you want to have settings that flow down a hierarchy of resources. And in a former iteration, this was called hierarchical policy attachment. Um, this is particularly useful in gateway API because we have a hierarchy of resources, right? We have gateway class, gateways, and then the routes underneath them. And then they also reference backends and other, um, other resources. 
So in this example, we have a gateway and some HTTP routes that attach to that gateway. Um, and we have a target ref in this rate limit policy that targets that great gateway. So all the configuration in this policy should be applied to the gateway and all of its uh, uh, sort of child resources, the routes that attach to that gateway. And the, the core part of the inherited policy attachment idea is that um, we have a concept of overrides and defaults. So overrides are settings that um, are applied at the kind of the high, higher levels of the hierarchy, and they cannot be changed by objects lower down in the hierarchy. So you imagine in this example, we have a policy applied to the gateway. That means that any routes attached to this gateway, um, as if there are rate lim if requests come in that match those routes, if they're rate limited, the status code 503 should be returned. And that applies to all of the routes um, uh, in that gateway, and that, that cannot be changed by any configuration applied specifically to those routes. Um, on the other hand, we also have defaults, which allow us to set some default values that can be overridden by resources that are further down in the hierarchy. So you can see how these overrides and defaults may be able, uh, a powerful way to replace something like a uh, webhook validation or gatekeeper policies or other things that administrators have had to, have to use to um, ensure compliance, for example, in uh, resources that are created in that cluster that they're managing. Um, so here, for, uh, going along further with this example, we have another rate limit policy that's targeting a, sp a particular route in the, our gateway and route hierarchy, and it is uh, overriding some of the default values that were set in the uh, higher level policy. So we have a stricter rate limit in this in this policy that's applied to this particular route. So as you can see, if you expand this out to some more complex use cases, some more complex hierarchies of, of resources, this could be a really powerful tool for, uh, and that fits really well into the, the role-oriented uh, uh, and the different personas and the role-oriented role -oriented design of Gateway API. So now we've talked about a bunch of different extension points in Gateway API. Um, if I'm a, a developer working on an implementation, what do I do next? What's How do I sort out all these different extension points, all the flexibility that the API gives me? How do I, uh, how do I use it? So what we found is really useful is to document your use cases um, using the gateway API personas. For example, write down even just writing down statements as, as an app developer, I need to route traffic across multiple clusters. That go a really long way into helping you decide which extension point to leverage, um, what resources are involved, uh, what the access levels and RBAC rules possibly are needed in your uh, in your design. And then uh, to design your API, the Gateway API project is strives in this documentation to um, provide guidelines and um, um, documentation and, and recommendations on how to develop extensions. As, as the ecosystem matures um, and there's more implementations um, contributing to the, uh, the upstream policies and, and uh, 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 documentation, this, this will grow and you'll be able to get really good um, uh, uh, recommendations on how to design your APIs. And of course, following Kubernetes API design conventions as, as, uh, as is expected. Um, and of course, if you're implementing your API, if you chose an extension point that involves custom resources, um, you'll likely have to Im implement a controller that watches your custom resources and reconciles them along with um, other uh, the other gateway API resources. Um, and so a huge part of this is also uh, sharing and uh, contributing and collaborating with the upstream community. Um, these Gateway API extension points are still under active development and changing. A lot of uh, the stuff is um, still being developed in gateway enhancement proposals. And we're still thinking about um, how uh, policy attachment, for example, is observable, um, how to 
uh, surface status and errors and um, what policies are in effect, what configuration is in effect on a particular route uh, for users to be able to understand what their um, what is going on in their cluster and what uh, what they should expect from the configuration that they've applied. So as as we go through this process, um, as uh, developers that are working on uh, implementations of Gateway API or users, um, we would we'd love to have feedback and discussion on the upstream channels um, about your experience and, and your ideas as well. And so that's a neat little segue into talking about Gateway API extensions, where they're headed and how we can get involved. So uh, this active, as I said, is active development going on with Gateway API enhancement pr proposals and um, active discussion in the weekly community meetings in various time zones. Um, so definitely get involved in the community meetings on Slack in the Kubernetes um, Slack at the SIG Network Gateway API, and of course in the Gateway API GitHub repository. Um, enhancement of proposals, issues, discussions, pull requests, of course, everything is, is welcome. Um, and with that, Daniel, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, no, thanks, Sanjay. I, I would, I would say that um, that we I hope that you found our talk you know, useful. Uh, you know, and that there are many gateway API implementations out there. Uh, but when it comes to the extensions, like a majority of of the current implementations uh, focus on core or maybe even some extended uh, feature level. Or, uh, support level features. Uh, but this area that we have focused on our discussion for today, the extensions, that's an area that uh, is still um, very few implementations uh, take advantage of, of uh, the extensions. And so it's a great uh, time to get involved in the community, uh, especially around these extension mechanisms. And you see here the weekly gamma meetings. So even the APIs, uh, are evolving in the sense that uh, Gamma, which is a subgroup that's focused on uh, gateway API for mesh management. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of opportunity to really help develop um, extensions, um, extension best practices, or even how uh, gateway API evolves for, for mesh management. So um, with that said, uh, we hope uh, you take a moment and uh, give us some feedback on, on today's talk uh, and feel free to reach out to us. We're, you know, we're on Slack, uh, part of um, the, the Slack channel and, and involved in uh, different projects for CNCF and um, we really appreciate your time.